All this and more on DXP today. Good evening and welcome to another edition of DXB Today. Do not go anywhere for the next 60 minutes. Why? Because this is what's coming up. We're marking World Mental Health Day by looking into the different ways we can protect our own well-being. We'll find out why retreats are proving to be popular for those who want to de-stress and recharge. And we're going to try out a brand new wellness treatment that promises to restore balance to your body and your mind. Okay, guys, what do you do? Mental health day, what do you do to de-stress and recharge yourselves? Mm. You just spend an evening with you two. Oh, <laughs> Tom, I would not leave you relaxed. Yeah, no, definitely not. Um, I, For me, it's exercise. So getting out, being physically active actually helps me to get other things off my mind, listen to really good music, that kind of drifts me off into a world that I'm not in. Takes me out of my reality, I think. I'm with you on that one. The problem with me is because, as you well know, I'm a keen sports fan. So Do I'm doing exercise? a lot of exercise. I've never seen you exercise in my life. All right, then that's, that's a nice start to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Good start to the week there. Uh, Sorry, I so just didn't the know that was your thing. Exercise side of things, great. But then I also support a lot of sports teams, and obviously you've got two World Cups going on at the moment. So apologies if anyone's thinking, oh, Tom's sounding a little weird today. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of live sport on at the moment, a lot of cheering going on in the air. So watching de-stresses you, because I feel like that would be a stressful thing. You're Properly so invested in it. Me, yeah. Yeah, oh. and well, I, I'm a huge advocate for therapy and I believe that if you can afford it, that it is so worthwhile and I think everybody needs it. At least once in a while to kind of just recharge, figure out everything going on in your life. Uh, I can't recommend it enough. Yeah, well look, we're going to have some great experts joining us here today to tell us more on how we can improve our mental health well-being. And we are also going to be joined by a guest co-host who for today has achieved so much at such a young age. He is only in his mid-twenties and he's already founded the region's first mental health magazine. He's also been recognised internationally for his efforts in this area and on top of that, he's also a recording artist. So let's find out who our guest co-host is today. Hey guys, it's Ali. I go by Cairo Kid. I'm a musician, mental health advocate, and I founded the first mental health magazine for Arab youth. I'm extremely excited to be here. Ali is staying with us throughout the show to talk about his journey towards mental health, especially coming out of COVID. In the meantime, we're looking at different wellness treatments that could benefit both your body and your mind. What do you do to de-stress? Many of us prefer a good massage or a few hours at the gym. But there's also a growing number of unconventional wellness treatments that promise to promote physical and mental wellness. Here are five that you may want to try. Unlike your typical yoga class, laughter yoga combines laughter and deep breathing to boost endorphins and reduce stress. Those who do it say they find themselves genuinely giggling. A cacao ceremony is a type of gathering where people come together to drink pure cacao in a mindful and intentional way. It also includes meditation, sharing or music to create a space for emotional expression and connection. Taking an ice bath is exactly as it sounds, immersing yourself in a giant tub of ice. The intense cold promotes revitalization, reduces muscle soreness and, interestingly, can help boost mood and energy. Here's another cold treatment. Cryotherapy involves exposing the body to extreme cold temperatures for a few minutes. We're talking between negative 85 and negative 110 degrees Celsius. Sessions inside a cryo chamber, when done regularly, can promote muscle recovery, reduce inflammation, and enhance mental clarity. Sound healing makes use of sounds and vibrations to achieve relaxation and inner harmony. This practice is believed to alleviate stress, anxiety, and aid in emotional release. There's a world of options for those seeking improved mental well-being. Remember, your mental health journey is unique. Explore what resonates with you to find the perfect balance of wellness. So 
So as you can see, no shortage of treatments available out there. But what about making that first step, accepting that you need to make a change? Well, we've got a man who can help with us here today because uh, joining us as our uh, guest co-host today is Ali Salam. Ali, great to have you with us here, aka Cairo Kid, with us. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Good it's lovely to be board. here. Thank no, you so it's much. It's great Karen. to have you on board. And listen, I suppose the first question we've got to put to you is a lot of people... Look, the battle against mental health and the awareness for mental health has been going on for many, many years. But how much has that come into light, come into focus as a result of COVID? Do we have a better understanding of mental health as a result of COVID? Well, look, I think COVID leveled the playing ground in general. So we can't deny that COVID made everybody aware of, you know, stressors that maybe were very difficult to talk about. So in schools, we have more mental health awareness, the agenda came about to be a lot more up in front. So, you know, me working with the World Federation for Mental Health, working with the WHO, we, we saw a lot more of initiatives being taken. And that's always a good positive sign because that allows for conversations to start. And we have to understand that the biggest uh, issue with mental health is stigma. Mm. So stigma prevents access to care. And when we talk about it, that allows for things to move forward and people who need help to get the help that they need. Mm. Now, Ali, your journey with this started way before COVID though. What was it that, I don't know, um, brought you into this world and sphere? Yeah, I think, so I, I lived in Canada. Uh, I moved to Canada in 2014. Uh, I have an athletic background. So I swam here in Al Nasser. I swam in Cairo. I swam in uh, Scotland and ran 96. I'm an athlete and I'm used to the locker room. Mental health was out of question for me. So when I found myself in a state that I couldn't imagine possible, like I'm incredibly strong, how can I be this weak? That, I mean, those notions had to be shattered within and that journey led me to think of, you know, if I'm gonna get out, because I didn't find a purpose of getting out, then that bigger purpose needs to be me helping more people get out. And so I'm I sorry, used, when you say weak, you mean mentally weak? You felt like you were... Yes, I, yeah. I felt mentally weak. Right. I felt like I was, you know, unable to help myself in a way that I never imagined. I looked at myself in the mirror and I couldn't recognize myself. I was diagnosed with, with, with two disorders. So that made me feel like, I mean, I used to make fun of these people, like yeah. mentally ill people before I became one. And that was my epiphany and that started my journey. Mm. Uh, so let's actually dig into that because there's so many bodies and now resources available to you know, the youth to access, to, to even understand mental health on a one, 101 level. But let's talk about like the internal community within yeah. kids and those kind of, like you just said that you would potentially be the one taking the mick out of them. Yeah. But, but where is that? community within youth now to actually come together and support each other? It's a very interesting question. I mean, we're building it right now. Uh, there isn't a, a specific place that we're building it, but schools are taking initiatives. And I think, you know, it starts with your, your inner circle of friends or who you feel safe around. I always ask myself, you know, do you know if you have a mentally stable environment or healthy environment or not? By asking yourself one question, do I fear judgment from those around me? If I answer yes, then that's not really a safe environment that I'm putting myself in. But if I answer no, I don't fear judgment, then whoever I am spending time with is gonna accept me unconditionally. And that is basically something that we're teaching people. Uh, I mean, especially in the Arab world where we don't really, we are not super comfortable talking about mental illnesses for many preconceived like notions that are being shattered right now. And I'm so proud to be part of this sort of movement of progressive Gen Zs and youth taking action because we have the voice, right? Mm, we often talk about the journey, the very personal journey for somebody addressing and take that first step to address that, yeah, I do have mental health issues and I need to address them. A lot of people will talk about, you know, the things that make you feel good. We were just talking about it a few minutes ago, whether it be sport for NIMI, whether it be some other activities for others as well. Yeah. When did you realize that music was your, your portal away from mental health? Um, I used to go to therapy. I really love therapy. It wasn't until when my mom told me, Ali, you won the talent show at school. You obviously love singing. And for mom, an Arab mom telling her son, why don't you go try singing lesson? I was like, mom, what? <laughs> <laughs> 
And honestly, honestly, upon my first class, I felt something I never felt before. I felt like I was able to express myself emotionally in a way that made me feel alive. And that was when I knew, aha, I, I found it. And, and music is just one avenue. It's my, the main avenue and sports as well. But sports isn't as emotive as music. Mm. I think it's very important to have an artistic way to really be vulnerable and like just yeah, just take everything out, undress sort of your emotions in a beautiful, lovely way. Yeah. Ali, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. We're definitely going to be digging a lot deeper, so stay with us. Uh, but after the break, we're going to find out the benefits of going on a wellness retreat and what it takes to really organize one. And we've got our spotlight for today, so don't you go anywhere. So join us after the break. <laughs> 